So I'm slated to give the last talk of the day. That means this can be fun, <laughs> right? Jonathan goes after me. He doesn't mind if I run long. So let's start out with the foundations. Let's just beginning at the beginning. What is AI, right? This is an AI talk. AI is an algorithm. It's math, right, at its core. Don't believe all those like news headlines where it's like, oh, we're doing these exciting supercomputer quantum junk, right? It's math. It takes in numbers. It does a couple of mathematical functions and it spits out a number or some numbers. And that's the essentially, that's the bulk of it. Maybe your inputs represent colors in a picture. Maybe it's some sort of audio sound. Maybe it's something that's binary, like work through lunch or gotta eat lunch. <laughs> but it's all just numbers, right? And AI is just an algorithm. Sometimes it's a big, messy, world record breaking spaghetti pile of an algorithm, but an algorithm all the same. Numbers go in, math is performed, numbers come out. That's AI. So what is bias then? Let's see, there's brave people in the front row. Who thinks they know what bias is? You in the middle. Yep. yes. <laughs> You're not wrong, but it's a little bit bigger. Let's see who else is brave. Let's hear from you. <laughs> What's bias? Or just give me an example. Example's fine. Yeah, I think bias is underrepresented data that skews a decision in one direction. Uh, that's more cause than effect. But, you know, we'll, we'll accept it. So bias, right? is this huge umbrella for error, right? It is errors that are disproportionately located. So if you get errors for one group more than another group, that's bias, right? And it can go in beneficial ways. It can go in detrimental ways. But if you're better at detecting cancer than detecting a lack of cancer, that is bias. If you have tailored workout regimes that are too difficult for 5%, but not challenging enough for 20%, that is bias. And why weren't all the first astronauts women? I understand this came up earlier. We weigh less, we take up less space, we eat less, we drink less, we make less waste, better center of gravity. Why were we hell bent on taking the expensive route? That's also bias. <laughs> I was gonna say, is Ned up there? He'll censor me for the internet. <laughs> so in fact, bias is expansive and prevalent and all around us. And since we're in a laboratory, we'll do a little experiment because nowhere better to do an experiment than a laboratory. Who's wearing a fitness tracker? You know, one of these Fitbits, Garmin's, Amazon Fits, Gushocks, Carbonics. Did they, they confiscated them. They confiscated them. Right, even the Fitbits that don't have GPS. Wow. Somebody heard I was gonna do this and they were like, let's just, you know, pull the rug out from underneath there. Right, so, We'll do it with me then and with a few Lincoln Laboratory people who they trust to like, you know, measure their steps. <laughs> and what we're gonna do in just a minute is just clap 20 times, right? Giving me what I would, was hoping for, a premature round of applause, <laughs> right? But I'll count us off because if you have to do it kind of fast or the, the Fitbits, you know, and the Garmin's, they kind of clue into what you're doing. And so you have to do it kind of something like, who's got the Fitbits again? Raise your hands. One, two. Really? One in the back? Okay, it's going to be ready, set. We're going to clap 20 times. I'm going to count us off as we're clapping. It's going to go pretty fast, like, ready? I'm watching you guys, fit, fit, people. Ready, set. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, stop. All right. How many people's fitness trackers think they went for the cutest little run? <laughs> That's right. That's right. This is bias. Right, and why is this happening? No, no? Oh, you clapped wrong. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, there you go, right? So this is a perfect example. So very often our fitness trackers think that we're doing fitness when we're really doing other things, but why? And the answer is kind of simple. When you give somebody a hammer, they're gonna see nails. Some real, some imagined, but nails are what they're gonna look for. So when you're actually creating an AI, you not only have to teach it, this is what stepping looks like, but you also have to teach it, this is what stepping doesn't look like. Well, that's a much bigger data set. And in fact, 
the Fitbits are really bad at discerning a lot of things that are not fitness. They think you're doing the elliptical, they think you're doing cross country, they think you're doing, uh, what is it? I have a very famous one that I run into all the time. Oh, I always hold a coffee in my right hand, also my Fitbit arm, and it always thinks that I am, uh, what is it? The Nordic skiing? <laughs> yes, right? <laughs> like, I was inside all day. I don't know what you're thinking. All right, one of my greatest arm workouts, in fact, was when I ended up needing crutches for a few weeks, had a brilliant moment, jumped through a mirror, don't suggest it to anybody. Um, so cut up my legs pretty badly and needed to be on crutches. And crutches is like the greatest arm workout that no one wants to have to do, right? You're not allowed to lock your elbows, right? You're definitely not allowed to use your armpits. That way lies nerve damage, by the way. Just support your whole body weight on your arms to get anywhere and everywhere. And so if you're trying to look like professional and like actually get to meetings, this makes life very difficult. So every day I would like come into work, I would crutch down the big Lincoln hallways because people, even though I told them, would make meetings like, you know, some sort of master path around the laboratory. And every time at the end of the day, I would check my Fitbit and my Fitbit would be like, oh, you didn't walk at all today. Thanks, Fitbit. <laughs> Kick me while I'm down. So bias everywhere, right? And from all that that I've just narrated, what's our first easy way for reducing bias? Because you're going to see AI pop up more and more. It's kind of the, the sexy little sprinkles, the goji berries, the uh, you know avocado that people are like, this is going to make this more exciting. AI, right? <laughs> Popping up everywhere. So how do you make sure that that AI is good, that it is unbiased, or at least is mitigating its bias to the greatest extent that it can? The first one is train with negatives. You want your tracker to count steps? You better teach it what steps do not look like. You want it to recognize bone fractures? Show it a couple healthy bones, and also bones that have been repaired. I understand from the, the health section that they don't look quite the same afterwards. You gotta give it the whole gamut there. You want people to exercise at their optimal level? You need to know what too easy and too hard also looks like. So easy enough. Number one, train with negatives. Now let's move on because your tracker data, that's all sitting upstairs behind our desk, now has data for steps and not steps, but it's still overestimating. You definitely did not just run a 50th of a mile. You're just at a fun conference for women's military health and fitness. So number two is balance your data. Algorithms are clever, but they're lazy, lazy as anything. <laughs> and if you give it a shortcut, it's gonna take it. Now, what do I mean here? So my husband loves to do these things where he'll do like pop trivia quizzes. We'll be in the supermarket and some wild song from the 80s is gonna come on and he'll be like, oh, who is this? And I will say, it's some old white guy. <laughs> and 99% of the time, I'm gonna be right. And your AI will do the same thing if you let it. If you're training your AI, your data, with like 90% steps and 10% claps, right? Even if you've got that negative data there, you checked that first box, right? Your AI is gonna be like, you know what? I can just figure out the clapping and I'm gonna get 90%. That is an A minus, that is a passing score. Good job made. No need to even bother with all that clapping stuff, right? So you can't train it with 90% staffs and 10% clapping. You need to train it with 50 and 50. And this way you kind of eliminate that shortcut automatically. But Nairi, you might say, well, that's a lot more clapping than we're prepared people, <laughs> than we're prepared to pay people to do, <laughs> right? And this is what copy and paste is for. So I said, Jing, you had like 13 women, is not gonna work for you. <laughs> but when you're dealing, right, with like big data, when you've got tens of thousands of samples, and you've got hundreds and thousands, copy and paste is perfectly fine, right? You've got 10 samples of clapping and 90 samples of steps, take those 10 samples, copy and paste them eight times, you're balanced. This works statistically. So it can be, caveat here, a little bit more complicated. Sometimes people do that, that slow clap, right? Or the ironic clap. Maybe we'll see some of that tonight. Um, so more might be needed, but the concept is the same. And what we consider complex, sometimes AI doesn't. So don't also make yourself problems where they don't exist any. So this is actually very important because if you consider some simple numbers for the military, in the Navy, only one in four are women. In the Army, it's one in five. And the Marines, one in 10. Army Rangers, I was gonna say, is uh, Sydney still here? No, she ditched at me. Uh, <laughs> one in 50. Navy SEALs, anyone wanna guess? Zero. 
Zero. There are no Navy SEALs yet that are female. So, accepting the SEALs, because they're not an army of clones. Well, they're not an army of clones either, right? So, not accepting the SEALs. But if you hear somebody's making an AI, or using an AI to make something for the military, for civilians, or really for anything, and they're not copying and pasting big chunks of data to make sure that their algorithm's not taking that shortcut, they're doing it wrong, and you're gonna end up with bias. Also, if they say they balance their data by throwing out big chunks of data, you should fire them. <laughs> or I see a lot of young faces. If you can't fire them, call them out on their BS. <laughs> so that's number trick two new. Trick number two, balance your data, right? So what's number three? You've all dealt with this already, and there's quite the weird fight about it. Number three is use all your data. When you've got your fitness bands, before it even starts tracking you, it asks you a boatload of questions. Are you male or female? What's your height? What's your weight, right? What's your gender? How tall are you? What wrist are you gonna put this fitness tracker on? And why does it ask you these things? Because otherwise it has to guess. And when you guess something, sometimes you get things wrong. And if you base your other calculations off that first guess that maybe you got wrong, it can just be this whole chain reaction and that's, you know, that's how you get truly off trail, right? So the nice uh, the thing that I use to explain this to, I would guess you could say like layman, right? Is I'm like, hey, right? You accidentally mix up the sugar and the salt when you're making a cake and you get the milk and the butter and the eggs and the flour exactly right, but you don't end up with a cake at the end. And AI is the same. You mix up one of those initial predictions and what comes out the other end is something really unusable and definitely unpalatable. Hopefully you realize it before taking a bite, and hopefully you realize it before the New York Times takes a bite. Because if bias is out there, someone's gonna notice it somewhere. So, lots of places say they won't have bias because they just remove the bias fields. You probably all heard this, right? Where they're like, we delete this data, we're not gonna include gender, we're not gonna include race, it's gonna be fine, that doesn't work. We proved that doesn't work over and over again. So don't believe that one. In fact, I was posed this problem recently for some work here at Lincoln that we got for the military. And they were like, hey, now we want you to see if there is bias in some of our results. But we're not going to give you gender, or race, right? Those are all protected characteristics by law, federal government stuff, right? And, but we want you to determine if there's bias. And I was like, oh, yeah, no problem. Can I get some other fields of data? And they were like, yeah, you know, anything that's not protected. I was like, can I get selective service number? And they're like, oh yeah, yeah, we'll give you that. I was like, we're not gonna have any problems. I'll figure out if you've got a gender bias. <laughs> yeah, right. So it's the exact same as the game of like, guess who, you, if you, even if you can't ask like, you know, is it a man or is it a woman? You can knock down those other hints. You can figure it out pretty easily. So big picture here is don't make your AI guess from a picture of your wound, right? That you're bit by a dog. If you knew you were bit by a dog, and for everyone's sake and sanity, if you were bit by a dog, don't tell your AI you were bit by a snake. Give it the information that you know so it can make the best decisions. And specifically with medicine, fitness, health, I can tell you you should use all the information you can possibly get your hands on. So skipping back to the friendlier examples, your fitness tracker will never be more accurate than when you authoritatively tell it what you are doing. No Fitbit, I am not walking, I'm just sitting and clapping. And then later when you stride down the hall, no, I was just walking. I was not cross country skiing. Bam, your accuracy is improved. So for clapping and walking, frankly, Fitbit should be able to figure this out. But if you want accuracy, right? And until it can figure it out, you just have to tell it. Give your AI those pieces of the puzzle so it can put together the bigger picture and you'll be less likely to end up with some wild wrong answer because I had to guess something that you already knew. So. Number three, we're drowning in data. Easy tip number three is just use it. Which brings us to tip number four, demand excellence. Make bias, like accuracy, something everything is measured on. If you see bias and make an effort to look for it, demand fixes, demand improvement, and demand excellence. Even if something is already good, demand excellence. We just bought a Tesla and it's wonderful. Heated seats, vegan leather, and an autopilot that will drive you right off the road. <laughs> or if you're in Boston, right into oncoming traffic, we love those mid-intersection lane shifts. So autopilot does not handle any of those well. And sure, you can say it wasn't really designed for city driving, but it's not stopping people from asking for it to be better. 
And you know what else? The automatic windshield wipers, right? Those ones, we know exactly what they are made for. They have automatic for those too. They do a terrible job. No excuses there. Every Tesla owner will tell anyone who listens to them that they are magical, wonderful, incredible cars. But man, all those engineers, and they can't figure out how fast a windshield wiper should go, especially on days like today. So Tesla is working on that windshield wiper problem, maybe because shame is kind of a good motivator. But competition and the money that comes within competition is often a better one. So even if something is great, demand excellence. If you point out that something can be improved and the original company does not snatch it up, then thankfully we're in a world where somebody else will see it and do exactly just that. I will never buy an aura ring, right? One of those you know, fancy Fitbits that you can wear on your hand. My fingers swell and shrink wildly, so I'd end up losing the ring or losing a finger, neither of which is really appealing to me. But one of the useful things that they do is they incorporate the last night's sleep that you had and your exercise goals for the day. So if you really just tank your sleep last night for whatever reason, right? Then the next day they're not like, hey, right, get up and do your whole routine the way you would if you had that perfect night's sleep and excellent, perfectly nutritionally balanced home cooked meal, et cetera, et cetera. And so last week I actually, right, I was out a day with a cold and spent the entire day drinking tea, trying to sleep. And my Fitbit, which is on just my regular schedule, woke me up every hour, 10 minutes to the hour to tell me to get up and walk. <laughs> Thanks, Fitbit. <laughs> so now we know I could have just rolled onto my back and clapped out my step goals, <laughs> but I shouldn't have to, or rather it shouldn't ask me to, right? And I think somebody developing ordering must have realized this. Calibrating our fitness goals to our rest isn't a steep ask. Fitbit already measures sleep poorly, but it measures it. And I didn't even know about this capability either until I read about it in a blog, right? And now that I want it, no, right? Now that you know about it, you can want it and you can just tell Fitbit, you know, you gotta step up your game, right? Everybody else is advancing, the bar is raised. So even with something completely new, revolutionary, wonderful, maybe they're even still just figuring out, still demand excellence. And by this point in my talk, you may think that I hate my Fitbit. <laughs> But no, I love it, and I love my Tesla, and I love my husband, not in that order, darling, he's in the back. Um, but no, I can, just, I can just see all the way that things can be improved. And lots of these improvements are already within our grasp and our capabilities. AI is this revolutionary, wonderful tool. They're just figuring it out, but we must demand excellence. When AI goes wrong, the best case scenario is someone, like me, ends up horribly embarrassing themselves. Is this sometimes a good thing? Little humble pie? Never hurt anybody. Helps with the God complex. But we're using AI to prepare the warfighter, to diagnose illnesses, to assess injury, to train battlefield medicine, to identify friend versus foe, to map terrorist networks online, to translate slang encoded messages and learn enemy attack planes, to predict the paths of hurricanes and attack drones, to keep our own aircraft from colliding and for detecting PSD, PTSD. Ah. AI gone wrong in these scenarios means someone dies. So accept nothing less than excellence. The good news is, at least for bias, simple techniques will get you a long way. Number one, train with negatives. We have data for walking and not walking and clapping and yes, even walking with crutches. And we're getting more data all the time. Use it. Number two is balance your data. Remove those shortcuts. Copy and paste is so easily we penalize people for it sometimes. This is not one of those cases. Three, use all the data. If you make AI guess, don't be disappointed when it comes back and says, some old white guy. And finally, demand excellence. Demand it until you get it and then raise your bar. Thank you. <laughs>